Hi, this is Tiffany, and this is The Balanced Life, Redefine Success, Redefine Fail. And today's video, on the last day of July, we're starting into August, thinking about back to school. We are talking about back to school for homeschoolers. Like I said, I homeschooled for about 12 years. I also had um, all four of my kids went to private school at some point. One of my kids went to public school. I have a daughter who's deaf, and so she went to public school school for a while and then went to a private deaf school and then went to a public deaf school. Um, and then my other kids were homeschooled and went to private school and two of them now at a public university. So I am very familiar and I have taught at a private school. I was a homeschooling mom and I've taught at um, or worked with teachers at a public school. So I've seen it all. Um, so I understand back to school for homeschoolers. When you're thinking about back to school, especially when money is tight, I realize there's not the issue necessarily of driving back and forth and having to buy specific supplies. But the struggle for the homeschooling family, at least for us, was um, planning the curriculum, being able to buy. I liked to buy, um, I used a Becca's DVD curriculum, especially toward the end, and I really, really loved it. Because I liked my kids being able to come and tell me what they were learning about and I could talk with them about things and then I could supplement other things that I felt were really important like budgeting things and um, some of the things in the family and having that extra time that homeschooling gives you with your kids. But um, I would encourage you as you're planning your homeschooling year to plan the curriculum, Engage the kids. Get their feedback about any kind of projects or things they are particularly interested in. I know sometimes there's some kids that have a real lack of motivation on certain things and, you know, maybe they're only interested in a particular show or they're only interested in a particular game. Um, but still find ways to get the kids involved in the homeschooling process and make them feel like they're a stakeholder, that they have um, some kind of input in it. And um, something I did not do till the very end, and I really wish I would have thought about early on, was I created a project budget. And every because I had a structured curriculum, um, each semester I would have um, my daughter, because I have all daughters, I would have a daughter um, create a project. And they had a set budget. I don't remember how much she got. It was like 50 or $75 because she was building this mechanical arm. Um, but they had to create the project, put together like what they were trying to do. They had to keep a journal of what they did right and wrong. So they were graded based on the progress, not on whether or not it worked. Because what I was trying to teach them was how to work through a problem and think creatively. We don't always get it right the first time. Um, but she had a set budget that she could buy the supplies. And when she, <laughs> the first one is she was making this hydraulic arm and she had these little um, squirting, uh, yeah, I don't know, syringes. And the ones that she bought were huge and she thought they were going to be smaller. And so she had to like redesign all this stuff and it caused this problem, caused that problem. Um, but it was a really great learning experience, which is what school is about. So I wish I would have thought when they were like earlier when all my girls were homeschooling to do this project-based thing because it was something outside of the structured curriculum where it was being dictated to them what they had to do, what they had to learn, what they had to study, what they had to read, how many math problems to do. This was something that was completely under their control, something they were completely interested, something they wanted to do, and something they wanted to find out about, and they had complete control and free reign, and they were not given an A if it worked and an F if it didn't, they were giving an A for working through the problem and trying to find solutions or at least finding out what didn't work. So that's a really cool thing for back to school. And I hope as a homeschooler, you'll consider it. Um, so also have your kids help you determine what supplies they might need, the cost, the budget, um, saving reserves, all these things. Have them participate in, okay, what do you think we'll need for this? How much paper do you think we'll need for this? Okay, we have this thing coming up. What kind of notebook do you think will help you to best do it? This is what I want to see you do. And um, see if they are, you know, they. you might have to redirect them if they don't, um, if they 
if they don't have a realistic sense of what they're going to need, but at least get their input and talk them through why that might not work. And sometimes just let them do it. And when they realize natural consequences, oh, wait, that didn't work. Say, oh, well, I guess you're going to have to figure out how to pay for that because we already used the rest of the money to do this other thing over here. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, like I said in a previous video, I think it was yesterday, about saving money with lunches and things. On homeschooling, if your kids find a cost-saving way of doing something, consider splitting those savings with them or putting it into a field trip budget or something like that where they have some kind of benefit that they derive by their good ideas. Again, these are life skills that we get to learn in homeschooling, which is something really cool that we get to do that you don't get to do in a public or private school. Um, and if you're a person who does primarily project-based homeschooling, not necessarily unschooling, but it could apply to that, but if you do more unit studies and those kind of things, have one class or task that you do consistently, if not every single day, on set days every week, the reason is we need to teach our homeschoolers how to operate in society, and that is a necessary skill. And that's one of the things I often see homeschoolers miss out on. We get so excited about the flexibility that we forget to teach the kids how to manage their time and manage themselves. And they get this sense that the world is just this fluid do whatever thing, and they're not properly prepared for entering the workforce where there is, you have to be here at this time and you have to do this thing and you have to do that thing. And that is one area of weakness in homeschooling. And one way to fix that is to have consistency outside of just like a dance thing on Thursday, which again is a fun, unstructured activity. But have something like every Tuesday and Thursday where they have to sit down for an hour at a set time and do a specific task. Um, whether it's reading, book reports, some kind of math thing, I don't care. Um, that's not as relevant as it is that they have to quietly focus and work through their, um, you know, work in a different way. Uh, so those are some of my ideas for back to school for homeschoolers and some things um, that's unique to the homeschooling paradigm. I would love to hear some of your ideas, although my kids have all graduated and no longer homeschooling. We are building a community here, and I want to be able to have other homeschoolers as they find this channel find some other really cool things that they can do. So if you would, please put your comments below and like, share, and click the bell so that you can find out about the next thing, which I'm going to be talking about luck and skill. I will see you then.